Come on, whether you're live here in the studio or you're watching in the Zoom room, I just dare you to just lift your hands right now where you are. If you're watching online, God, we, we need you right now. I'm talking about the faithfulness of you, the provision of you, your peace, your joy, your counsel, your comfort. God, your presence right now. God, I pray, God, right now that your presence invade every household, invade every heart, invade every storm. Father, right now, uh, it, it doesn't matter what's going on in the economy. It doesn't matter what's going on in the, in the world and the tension and, and, and even in the hospitals right now. What we need is a visitation and a habitation of you. Not tomorrow, right now. Father, I pray that people find joy and strength right now. Father, I pray that people feel your presence right now. Father, do what only you can do. Give us the kind of peace that surpasses our own understanding. Father, even for those who are watching online right now for the first time, and they're like, man, what is going on? What I'm praying right now, that wherever you are, wherever you're watching, that right now you feel the tangible touch of the Holy Spirit, which is simply the presence of God. That's what we need right now. I've come to find out that one moment in God's presence can change everything. Does anybody have a testimony that one moment in God's presence can change everything? Come on, put your hands together. Y'all can have your seats here live in the studio. We want to just welcome every single person who is watching online on behalf of my amazing wife, Pastor Irene, and myself and our family. Uh, we just love you. Welcome home. Uh, yes, we are not uh, one church in one location. Uh, we are actually one church in thousands of locations, and those locations are right where you are, whether you're at home in your kitchen, in your family room, in your living room here live in the studio, or uh, I'm watching so many of uh, so many amazing faces here on our Zoom, uh, in our Zoom rooms. And what's up, Zoom rooms? How y'all doing? They're, they're, they're saying hallelujah right now, y'all. <laughs> but uh, I just thank you all. And uh, we're so excited. Irene and I are just so excited for what God has in store for you and our church. And we absolutely love that we get to do life with you. And uh, I get to preach to live people. Come on, somebody. Ain't nothing like that. And man, I'm tired of preaching to a camera. Amen. And, and uh, I'm believing that God has a word uh, for you uh, in, your, in your house. And, and uh, we've been in this Heart for the House uh, series. Actually, it's been the signature series, but we've been talking about what does it mean to have a heart for our house. And you've heard about our vision for local outreach and our shower units and expanding that and our food distribution. And, you know, you've heard about our, our I-5 elite and taking that to another level and, and, and getting behind, uh, you know, funding and, 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 you know, we don't give to a church, we give through a church with the Miss Faye uh, Scholarship Fund of $15,000. And you've, you know, you've heard about our missions and our outreach uh, organizations. We hear I-5, uh, the I-5 Kids Center over in Nairobi, Kenya, and so many amazing things that God is doing, uh, not only in our church, but through our church. And I want to thank each and every one of you uh, that attend our church, each and every one of you that have sowed into the vision of this house that everything that you give, I'm telling you right now, it is about changing lives. And I want to encourage you that even throughout this message, as the Holy Spirit speak to you, uh, we're believing God for a miracle offering today that we can advance and continue the vision of what God has called us to do. And, and you don't have to wait till the end of this message. You can give all throughout this message, all throughout the day. Uh, I'm believing that today is going to be a, a monumental moment in the history of our church. And even for some of you who are like, man, I'm not sure, uh, you know, you know, things are a little crazy right now. I'm not, I'm, things are a little uncertain right now. I want to encourage you to have faith in God. What I do know is that as we take care of God's house, as Devante said, uh, uh, God will take care of, of our house. And, and uh, I'm, 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 I'm pumped. I'm, I'm pumped because on the other side of COVID, come on, somebody is revival. Come on, come on. On the other side of this is a miracle. And, and, uh, and I just want to encourage you, as I said, just all throughout this message. Matter of fact, uh, all throughout this week, all throughout this month, I'm believing uh, by the end of the year uh, that we're going to see God do something amazing. And, and if you want, you can go online and you can fill out 
uh, that commitment card of, of what you'll give like now and then what God has laid on your heart to give over the year of 2021. And we're going to see God do amazing things. Y'all ready for God's word? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Amen. Like three of you are. Let's go. Uh, Mark chapter two, uh, verses one through five. And I preached this scripture uh, before, uh, but in a different way. Uh, and, I, I, and God really, I was like, man, what do I preach you know, this heart for the house and, you know, God, what scripture do you want me to focus on? And I was all throughout, reading all throughout my word about all of the miracles that God did in houses. And, uh, and I was like, God, what, you know, the, the church house, the temple, the synagogue, you know, the tomb was actually a house. And, uh, uh, and, and I just, I landed on this one and, and you've heard this, uh, this story about the paralytic man uh, who was brought in by four friends on a mat. Uh, but God really showed me something else, and I want to give it to you uh, how God gave it to me. Is that all right? Y'all ready? Mark chapter 2, uh, 1 through 5, it says this. It says, when Jesus returned to Capernaum, several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. I love that. Don't you love when Jesus is at home? It says, soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors, with lost people, with Christians, with people confused, with young people, with old people, uh, with rich people and poor people, uh, people who grew up in church, people who had no concept of church. It was so packed that there was no more room, even outside the door. There was a line. Come on, somebody. Jesus' house had good Yelp reviews. Because while he was preaching, God's word to all of those diverse people. Four men arrived carrying a paralytic man on a mat. This house was so packed that they couldn't bring him to Jesus because of all the needs. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of all the wounds. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of all the testimonies. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because all of those who had Marriages have been restored. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because all of those who are waiting for a miracle. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of all of those who had already experienced a miracle. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of all of those who had been healed. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of all of those who are waiting to be healed. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of homeless people and people who had homes. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. So they dug a hole through the roof above his head. They removed the limitation. They refused to say that we have reached our capacity. They refused to say, to say that we have, or had the mindset that we've already done enough. <laughs> these four guys, these secret assassins spiritually said more is in store for this place are y'all hearing what I'm saying these four guys said that COVID ain't shutting us down these four guys said I, I, I know I'm struggling emotionally right now but God is about to do something spiritually we we got to take this thing to a whole nother level. These four people, come on, Zoom Room said, we, 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 we can't. I, I know I'm behind a screen, but, but, but guess what? God's going to do something right here at this computer. These four guys said, no, 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 enough is not enough. We're going to take this thing to a whole nother level. So they dug a hole through the roof above his head. And then they lowered this man on the mat right down in front of Jesus, seeing their faith. <laughs> Isn't it crazy how Jesus notices faith? Seeing, it doesn't say seeing their finances. It doesn't say seeing their focus on their future. It says right now, in the condition that you are right now, in the space that you are right now with COVID going on right now, seeing their faith. I want to know in this heart for the house season, can God see your faith? 
I know it's easy for people to see your fear, but can people see your faith? Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed guy, my child, your sins are forgiven. Later on, Jesus looked at this man and said, now take up your mat, go out into the city and shout, look what the Lord has done. Seeing something's got a hold of me. Come on, somebody. Father, I pray, God, that you do something amazing throughout my time as I'm sharing this message and throughout the remainder of the year, God, that you would blow our minds, that, that, that we would see people's faith. In Jesus' name. And everybody said a good amen. Come on. Come on, Zoom Room. Somebody say amen. If you're watching online, somebody say amen. Can I get an amen in the studio? And a good amen. I want to talk to you and preach to you from this topic over the next few minutes. It's, it, it, it's, 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 we already sang it. It's called A House of Miracles. Come on, somebody. Can you look at the person, if you're in the studio right now, and just say, A House of Miracles. On Zoom Room, can you just declare over your house right now? Just say, This is a house of miracles. Come on. Some of you online right now say, This is a house of of miracles. Now can everybody, no matter where you're, just tap your heart right here and say, this is a house of miracles. A house of miracles. I have seen since the inception of this church, miracle after miracle. I have seen the miracle of marriages being restored. I have seen the miracle of supernatural blessings on God's people. I have seen God extend years of misfay. I have seen diagnosis, come on somebody, be demolished under the power of God because this is a house of miracles. Ah, come on somebody. I, I, I have seen uh, EJ and uh, Merchant uh, being in the hospital and, 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 and the doctors saying that, that he was brain dead. And, 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 and I have seen a church say we plead the blood of Jesus at, at midnight. Come on, somebody, two years ago and says this is not on to death. Why? Because this is a house of miracles. I have seen young people walk in the purpose and the destiny of God because this is a house of miracles. I have seen older people walk in purpose and I have seen us come on, do things that we have never said, thought that in our wildest dreams that we would do. I have seen for almost five years ago when the church was in Mead Middle School and we were doing church and the government said that we couldn't meet there any longer and we started having church on a Sunday night at five o'clock and I have seen 30 people still push forward the vision of this church and then this building shows up because this is a house of miracles. I have seen young people come on in the presence of God worshiping. I have seen old people worshiping. I have seen white people and black people come together and short people and tall people and rich people and poor people. I have seen people find hope and destiny through a shower. I have seen, come on somebody, a shower unit. I have seen miracles of not feeding the 5,000, but feeding 450,000 pounds of food. Why? Because this is a house of miracles. Can you type in this chat, in the Snapchat, whatever it's called right now, in the chat, this is a house of miracles. Can somebody just declare this is a house of miracles. This house. Y'all lucky we not live because we'd be shouting right now. My band would be playing right now because this is a house of miracles. How do I know? Because I'm still married. And my wife is five years sober because this is a house of miracles. I need a little bit better shout right there because if I'm honest with you, I can't believe 
that we still get to team up with Jesus to change the world because this is a house of miracles. I've seen people get jobs they're not qualified for because this is a house of miracles. I have heard testimonies where credit scores were bad and they, and they, and they shouldn't have been approved and, and, and for some reason uh, the credit score supernaturally changed because this was a house because there was a Holy Ghost credit repair person. Y'all, see, see, what happens is, is there's been some unknown supernatural things that I thought I'd let you in on right now because this has been a house and is a house. Has anybody received a miracle from this house? Has anybody found the joy from this house? Has anybody got a little bit of peace from the vision of this house? This is a house of miracles. We say that we're not a church that does outreach, but we're an outreach powered by a church. Which, if you pull that apart, what we're really saying is that our effectiveness to create miracles and to be a part of miracles outside of the house is contingent upon the miracle in the house. And if we're not a church that does outreach and we're an outreach powered by a church, we got to have an amazing church. Amen. And three of y'all was like, amen. amen. It says to me that the church is the gasoline amen. to the vision. It says to me that outreach is the ambulance. Those who serve in outreach are the paramedics. But those who are in the church are the doctors of the hospital. And when we go and reach people, we have to have a place to bring them back to. And right now, that place is a little fractured, COVID. That place is the churches. I've talked to pastors all week, and they're nervous because their people are fragmented, and they're, they don't know where they're at, and the church vision is at stake because of COVID-19. But we didn't build a church with brick and mortar. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of COVID-19 will not prevail against it. Can I get a good amen? Come on, somebody. For all those who are watching online, this is a house of miracles. And where we find Jesus, where we find all of these People, this sold out event where there's no more room, we find them in a house. In a house. And if you read Mark chapter 1, you will see that the kingdom of God is not just relegated to one place, it is relegated, it is, it is appropriated, it is celebrated in many houses. And Mark chapter 1 begins with John the Baptist preparing the way for Jesus. In John 1.14, it says then Jesus' ministry was released, and it says that Jesus preached the kingdom. And John, in Mark 1.16, he calls his disciples to follow him, not just follow him as he makes disciples, but follow him from house to house. Check out the houses that Jesus entered. In Mark 1.21, he enters the house of a synagogue, and he casts out a demon, an unclean spirit. In 129, he enters the house of Peter and Andrew and heals Peter's mother-in-law. How many of y'all mother-in-laws need healing? Come on, somebody. From their attitude. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. In verse 32, people 
are brought to Jesus to be healed. In 133, Mark 133, it says that the whole city was waiting at the door of the house that Jesus was in to be healed. A whole city at the door of a house. In 140, Jesus heals a leper. And then he tells the leper in verse 45, don't tell anyone because there's a capacity issue at the house. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Can you, now, now, now hold on now. Now, when lepers were walking out their diagnosis of leprosy, they would have to announce themselves when they came into a city. I am leprous. And then Jesus heals them and tells them, don't tell nobody. Now, here's what I want to tell you. If you have announced my issue, if you have announced my test, if you have announced my misery, do you think I'm going to keep my ministry? Do you think I'm going to keep my testimony to myself? Ain't no way in the world. But why does Jesus tell him not to announce himself? Because at times there could be a capacity issue in the house. Does the house have any more room for miracles? Is the vision over because of COVID-19? Is the house done because of the economy? Is the vision of this house of miracles, is it, is it subjected to layoffs and furloughs? If the Bible says that Jesus says, I'll build my house, we take our hands off of it and say, it's not mine to worry about. This is Jesus' house. In other words, Jesus is saying, I got this. I got this. I got this. I, 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 just, I just feel that that's in your spirit. I've got this. Now, what we find here is now Jesus in a house. The Bible says here that when Jesus returned to Capernaum, now Capernaum was the chief launching space or, or geographic area of the launch of Jesus' ministry. Jesus calls his disciples in Capernaum. Capernaum is the place where he's calling people. He, the Capernaum is the place where he's saying, I'll make you fishers of men. Capernaum is the place where Jesus tells his disciples who weren't catching anything to throw the nets to the other side, and there was revival in Capernaum. So we could say that Capernaum is like having the home field advantage. Now, I don't know if I have any sports fans here, but I can tell you that there is nothing like playing in front of your own people. Can I tell you, there is nothing like, if you're a sports fan, of playing on your home turf. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying right now? And if you understand that, that when you play at home, the winning percentages go up. When you play at home, there are more for you than against you. When you play at home, where y'all at? It doesn't matter how far you're down. Come on, somebody. There is a cloud of witnesses saying you can do it. There are other people who are on your side that says you can make it. Come on, somebody. There are people pushing you to your destiny. There are people speaking those things that are not as if they already are saying you're going to make it. God has a purpose and a destiny for your life because you have the home field advantage. Can I just offer to you that this house here in Mark 2 is a house of miracles because Jesus has the home field advantage. Do you say, see, I can't wait to get to church on Sunday morning or tune in online on Sunday morning because I feel like I got the home field advantage. I feel like that the presence of God is with me. I feel like there's more for me than against me. I feel like I got my people. I feel like that no matter how much I'm down, I can get back up again. Why? Because I'm at home and I'm going to win through worry. I'm going to have more faith than I got fear because I'm around my 
people. And I'm telling you, we cannot allow this socially distanced to make us spiritually distanced because where are my people at? Do I got some people in the Zoom room that'll say we have the home field advantage? Do I have some people in the live studio that would say we got the home field advantage? Do I have some people online that will say I might be distanced from you? Come on, geographically, but I'm not distanced from you. Spiritually, we are in this together. Home field advantage. What made this a house of miracles is Jesus was at home. I started thinking about the components of this house that Jesus was in. And if I-5 City it's going to be a house of miracles. What are the types of people that we need in the house? Number one, the first types of people that's going to help us win. That's going to help us keep the home field advantage. And I went old school right here. Intercessors. Uh-huh. Some people where prayer is a lifestyle. Where y'all at? Some folks who don't mind shutting themselves down to social media and shutting themselves into a closet and not coming out until something changes. I'm talking about intercessors. I, I'm talking about people who intervene on behalf of a broken culture. I'm talking about people who stand in the gap. I'm talking about spiritual midwives that will stay, come on somebody, with somebody until their destiny and their purpose is birth. I'm talking about people where the presence of people is not their appetite, but the presence of God. Come on, somebody sustains them. God is looking for some intercessors. When I started thinking about the kind of people that were in this house, somebody had to prepare the atmosphere. Somebody had to go and come on, forward and, and say, I'm going to lead this thing. Somebody didn't. Prayer was not an atmosphere afterthought or a last resort. It was a first response. Somebody said that before my head hits the pillow at night and my feet hit the floor in the morning, I've got to pray. Somebody who has to be, come on, in the counsel of the Holy Spirit. Somebody who understands 2 Chronicles seven fourteen that says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven forgive their sins and heal their land. Somebody who knows it is well with my soul. Somebody who knows if it wasn't for the blood of Jesus, I don't know where I would be. Somebody who's ruined for the presence of God. Somebody who sacrifices their own desires and pushes forward the desires of somebody else. Is there any intercessors in the place that pray for lost people, that pray for homeless people, that pray for broken people that pray for the city, that pray for the pastors, that pray for the vision, that pray for the band, that pray for the security, that pray for the parking workers. If my people will humble themselves and pray. Pray. What took courage in the last season will only Take consecration this season. Intercessors who prepare the house where the presence of God ain't supposed to show up. This is Peter's house. Oh, this miracle is happening in somebody's house who kept forgetting Jesus. This miracle is happening in the house of somebody who would deny Jesus three times. This miracle is happening in the house. Come on, somebody. Of, of, of somebody where Jesus would call Satan. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. When Jesus says, get behind me, Satan, aren't you glad 
that Peter makes you happy, that you are a candidate for a miracle to happen in your house. You don't have to dot all your I's. You don't have to cross all your T's. God will show up right now. Somebody gets slain in the spirit right now in the Zoom room. Some of God will show up in the midst of your messy house. God will show up in the midst of your broken marriage. God will show up in the midst of your wayward children. God will show up in the midst of an empty bank account. Why? Because this is a house of miracles. And if God can do a miracle in Peter's house, God can do a miracle in my house. I dare somebody say, God, do a miracle in my house right Intercessor. intercessors what I understand about a homecoming game is that the opposition or the opposing team is always after the team who has the home field advantages mascot and if you know anything about college football there is actually another team that is not on the field of action, but they are used and understand their assignment to protect the mascot. Pastor, where are you going? Since the inception of this church, our mascot has always been worship. It has always been the presence of God. And God told me to tell you that we're looking for some people that don't need the spotlight, some people that don't need to be on the stage, but some people who will protect the mascot. Can I tell you that the enemy is after your worship? The enemy is after, come on somebody, your prayer life. The enemy is after your devotion life. Don't be so well adjusted to this culture that you fit into it without even thinking. I want you to know, that's why Paul said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you would offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing unto the Lord. We need some people to protect holiness. We need some people to protect the presence of God. We need some people to protect our worship. We need a, the Philistines stole the Ark of the Covenant. And when they stole the Ark of the Covenant, and uh, 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 the, the Israelites who won in one season don't win in the next season because their mascot was gone. Dare I double dog dare you to protect your mascot, to protect the vision and the mascot of our church. I ain't letting nobody just talk about our church. I ain't letting gossip just up in here or any, any old kind of way. Uh -huh, I'm not letting people question the vision. I, I'm protecting something. I ain't protecting me. I ain't protecting the past. I could care less about me. But I care about the vision. I care about the presence of God. I know that nothing here happens without his presence. So I'm going to do everything I can do. To, is there any intercessors? Where y'all at? That says, I, I, I'll pray. I, I'll fast. I'll, I, I, I'll protect my holiness so I can protect the holiness of our church. Uh, is there any single people that says, I just can't date anybody? Come on, somebody. Are there any married people that says, I need to keep the covenant of my marriage? Are there any young people that says, I need to keep myself pure? Come on, somebody. Are there any people that says, man, worship is not going to be lyrics. It's going to be a lifestyle because I am called to intervene. I am called to intercess. Why? Because lost people and broken people are coming to pack out the house and we don't want the house packed out. Come on, somebody. And then not have Jesus there. Intercessors. In my house, uh, right now, I, I have internet. How many of y'all know that during COVID, your internet speed is important? Where y'all at? All y'all working from home. How many of y'all in Zoom rooms right now and online? If your internet right now went out, you'd be like, what am I? I can't hear the rest of this message. I realized when COVID happened that we had to upgrade some things. 
And so I called Verizon and I, I said, I want the fastest internet possible. And so they had internet speed. I don't understand all that MPS. And I just said the fastest. They said, all right, we'll give you a gig. Boom. They hit a button, didn't need to come out, and I had a gig. And what I was wondering was, is why do I have a gig and my FaceTime still ain't working? Are y'all, any of y'all with me? Why, why? And then you start, you know, doing the online test. Come on, somebody. Have you ever paid for something and then it not work the way that it worked because what you paid for? I, I mean, then now you got an attitude because you didn't pay for it. And now you're calling the company because you paid for it. And y'all want, come on, y'all like me, I, I, I'll tell somebody about something. Uh-huh. You know, I'm trying to watch the TV in the little circle going. Right? It's trying to, no, I got a gig. What is going on? I'm on FaceTime and I'm dropping calls because I got a gig. And, and so I called Verizon. They, they said, have you done a test? I done, un, how many of y'all, first of all, don't tell me how to do the test. I done already unplugged it. I done plugged it back in. I've tried. Do you think I just called you without trying it already? Where y'all at? Any of y'all work for Verizon? Get yourself together. I did everything. Verizon said there's no problem on this end. So I had these things in my house called Wi-Fi extenders. And I had them in almost every room. And I didn't understand because I also paid for those. And I didn't understand. I'm standing right next to the extender and I keep dropping calls. So I finally called our network administrator at church, and I was like, hey, what's going on? And he said this. He said, well, there's nothing wrong with the power source. There's nothing wrong with the gig. The problem is, is the units that are supposed to distribute the gigs, they don't have the capacity to distribute what the power source has. So then what I did is I went on Eero, because that's what I got, dot com, and I realized that the power source hasn't been upgraded. It's been the same, but the Eero has been upgraded, and I didn't have the upgraded Eero to be able to distribute the power source so that I wouldn't lose FaceTime with God. <laughs> Pastor, what are you saying? What I'm saying is, is intercessors have to upgrade continually. What fed you in the last season is not going to feed you in this season. The spirit, what got you to where you are. I wish I had a keyboard player right now that had some. I wish I had a B3 organ right now because I would shout right now. Somebody needs to say, upgrade me during COVID. Upgrade me when my marriage is lost. Upgrade me when my finances are a wreck. Upgrade me, God, because you have not lost your power but I have got to find you oh my god and the and here's the here's what the here's what the uh the arrow people said they said make sure you place it in the right place keep it in the open for some of us our relationship with God is only behind closed doors But in this house of miracles, I'm telling you, if you read these scriptures, lepers were getting healed. Blinded eyes were, go were opening. People who had no hope. Why? Because there were some people in the house that kept upgrading, that kept protecting the presence of God, that stayed in the sweet spot of God's presence. We need intercessors, number two. If we're going to distribute this miracle. We need people who are praying for the vision right now. Number two, we need influencers. We need intercessors and we need influencers. Uh, intercessors are those who protect the mascot. Influencers are those who do anything to help others win. Mark 2, 2 and 3, while he was preaching God's word to them, 
Four influences. Four crazy people. Four people who were focused on not just going to church, but being to church. Carried a paralyzed man on a mat. What I know about homecoming games is there's always one section who ain't all together. <laughs> they will paint their faces. They will stand in line. They will sacrifice more than anybody else is sacrificing to make sure that everybody who's in the house wins. They were influencers. That's like the crazy outreach crew. There's always a crew. There's always a remnant. There's always a people within a people that will talk to people that normal church people won't talk to. There's always people, come on somebody, that says we got room for one more. There's always some people in a church that will rip a roof off, that will change the front door of the church, that will talk to people that nobody else will talk to, that won't label people because they sin differently. There's always people that will put making a difference over making a point. There's always people that will scream. There's always people that will talk trash when they are down. There are always people that will proclaim God's word when it doesn't look good. There's always a Gideon. There's always a Joshua who says that we're well able. Come on, somebody. There's always a remnant. There's always a Moses. There's always an Abraham. There's always somebody. There's always always a Rahab. There's always somebody who says we are well able. There's always somebody who says I'll do whatever it takes. You got to have. I want to know in this heart for the house season, is there anybody that will do anything to help other people win? Is there anybody that will sacrifice to help other people win? Is there anybody that will give big today to make sure that other people win? There, I, I took myself this morning in the way in the car. I was, I was in the spirit. I was in my spirit language. I was in worship. I, I was believing God for today. I was believing God for you. I was, I was. I, I drove through the parking lot when I got in the parking. People, people were telling me to park over there because I got a rental car. They didn't know it was me. And I said, No, I'm just driving through the parking lot for all the people that come in the studio. I want them to know that that I'm going to do whatever I can do to make sure they win. I, I, I want you to know that we've been thinking about you and we want to make sure you win. I want you to know that Irene and I have been praying for you because we, we are those people, those influencers. We are those intercessors. What I love about this is, is you can have all three. Come on, somebody. Well, what I love this is you can be an inter intercessor, you can be an influencer, and I'm going to get to number three. It's going to be an investor. But I'm telling you right now, I, I, I need somebody to win. So I took myself back to this football game. My last homecoming game was at Arundel High School in 1992. And there were two sides. And the one side, we were winning, but we didn't stop shouting. So we started this chant. And the chant said, we got spirit. Yes, we do. We got spirit. How about you? And the other team would say, we got spirit. Yes, we do. We got spirit. How about you? And we would say, we got spirit. Yes, we do. We got spirit. How about you? And everyone says, we got spirit. Yes, we do. We got spirit. How about you? Then everybody would say, we got spirit. Yes, we do. We got spirit. How about you? We got spirit. Yes, we do. We got spirit. How come on Zoom room? We got spirit. Yes, we do. We got spirit. But I love is there's always an influencer that wants the spirit in them. The same spirit in them. In the spirit of a paralyzed guy on the side of a road who has no spirit. 
And what I have found over the years is it is very easy for church people to slip into a we got spirit. Yes, we do. And stop the song there. Why was this a house of miracles? Because there were influencers who said we got too much spirit to keep to ourselves. There's lost people who need spirit. There's blind people who need spirit. There's people confused about their identity who need spirit. There's broken marriages who need spirit. And every single intercessor, every single influencer needs to go to some paralyzed people who say, we got spirit. Yes, we do. We got spirit. How about you? And today as you begin to give, what you're saying is, we got spirit. Yes, we do. We got spirit. How about you? See, right now what we're confronted with is we're in an uncertain season. And in this uncertain season, it's so easy to slip into as long as I'm good. As long as my house has food on the table. It's so easy not to trust God in this season. But there are people outside the door who need to get in the house to receive the spirit that you got inside of them. Here's what I'm asking. I'm asking every single person who's listening to me right now, if you watch this later this week, I'm asking you to share this message on your Facebook, on your Instagram, whatever it is, on your social media. Because there's some people that are without spirit that need your yes, we do. Yes, we will. We are well able. I've been thinking about this. We need some people that says, nah, you know what? We got to make more room. We got to expand the vision. We're not going to allow COVID-19 to keep a lid on what God is doing here at I-5 City. Here's the next thing I'm going to ask you to do. Then I'm out of your way. I'm going to ask you, every single person that's connected to our church, to give something. Here's what I believe. We are way better together. And Irene and I, Pastor Irene and I, she been, Pastor Irene been asking me all week, what are we going to give? What are we going to give? I haven't answered her. She'd be like, hey, yesterday, we were looking at the Christmas tree, sitting on the couch, what are we going to give? And I just hear this, we got spirit, yes, we do. We got spirit, how about you? So I'm going to roll the dice, babe. We're going to give double. And I wanna, I'm just going to tell you, me and Pastor Irene personally are going to commit to our Heart for the House offer. We're going to give $5,000 today. And here's what I'm telling you. Why? Why? Because there are people on the mat who have no spirit. There are people in our city who have no spirit. There are people who are watching online who have no spirit. And the vision of this church is not going to be limited to just us because it's COVID-19. There's some people outside of the walls who need to be brought into the house that need a miracle. We need influencers. We need intercessors. The last one is we need investors. People who are invested in the miracle. People, watch this, who have stake in the game. They got stake in building a house. They got stake. They're invested. They're sons and daughters of the house. They said, Pastor, we're with you. Pastor, we'll do whatever it takes. I've had staff call me and say, Pastor, I, I, I know giving is down, and, and if I need to get a part-time job, matter of fact, if I need to get a full-time job, I will still serve the vision of this house because they got stake in the game. <laughs> Am I nervous? 
Yeah, I'm nervous. Am I scared? Heck no. If he did it before, <laughs> he'll do it again. Same God right now. Same God back then. We need investors. I'm going to give you this last scripture, then I'm out of your way. It says in Mark 2, 4, and 5, they couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. So they dug a hole through the roof above his head, and they lowered the man on the mat right down in front of Jesus. Verse 5, seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. Wait a minute. Seeing their faith. Not seeing the faith of the paralyzed guy, but seeing the faith of investors. Seeing the faith of people who were invested in broken people. Seeing their faith, he healed him. I want to ask you right now, if you're watching online, if you're here in the studio, if you're here on Zoom, I believe today God is going to see our tangible faith. And as God sees our tangible faith through our finances as a church, <laughs> paralyzed people are going to get up and walk. Here's what's crazy. That scripture blows my theology. Because what it says to me is his healing wasn't on him believing. His healing was on us believing in the vision of that house to bring lost people in. Pause. The woman with the, with the bucket of oil, the woman with the vial of oil in 2 Kings, and, and, and her husband dies, and Elisha goes by her house, and she says, all I have is a little bit of oil. The Bible says she, he, he told her and her sons to go borrow as many vessels as they can, and God began to miraculously, what? Multiply that oil. When did the oil stop? When the buckets stopped coming. We got to make sure that the vision of our church is never about the offering bucket, but always about the empty people who come inside the four walls of the church. Because when we stop bringing in lost people is when the oil stops flowing. The oil is not just for us, it's to empower us. We got to invest seeing faith of somebody who just got laid off, seeing the faith of somebody who's uncertain about the season of their job, seeing the faith of broken people, seeing the faith. We're going first, man. I was thinking about, Nicole, the revival that was happening in that house, all those people coming to Jesus. Y'all got to realize the paralyzed guy wasn't the only one healed. He was just the story told. We can get so concentrated on reading the story, we forget about the ones that's not told. If Jesus is in the house, everybody gets healed. The intercessors get healed. The influencers get healed. The investors get healed. Seeing their faith. I want to ask you right now, I want you to get some stake in our vision today. I want, you to, I want you to go big today. There's some, there's some people in our church that have the gift of giving, and you're going to be able to match Pastor Irene and I. It's not about equal amount. It's about equal sacrifice. But imagine a church that everybody does something. I'm believing God. I'm believing God. I'm believing God that our offering today will exceed $350,000. Pastor, how does that happen when everybody sacrifices? I've just decided it's in God's hands. It's in God's hands. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I just want to be the pastor. I don't want to be the CEO. I don't want to be the boss. I don't want to have to, you know, talk to my staff about 
what it looks like if it doesn't happen. I just want to believe God. And I'm going to ask our church to not put me, help me not be in that position. I can't do this by myself. But I'm believing God that if all of us say that this is a house of miracles, then we'll have a miracle offering today to do what God's called us to do from now until eternity. That's not manipulation. I say this without hesitation. That was a word from God. This is a house of miracles. Amen. Father, I thank you. Can everybody just be in a posture of receiving? Because here's the deal. I still believe in Malachi 3.10. I still believe that God will open up a window and pour out so much that you don't have room to receive. And here, I do believe this, that if you're gonna bless this house, God's gonna bless your house. I do believe that. I do believe God's word. I do believe the spiritual principle of sowing and reaping. And God, I pray that as your people sacrifice, that you pour out so much that they wouldn't have room to receive. Church, I wanna tell you something that God told me. Y'all can look at me right now. God told me this. In the beginning of the year, 2020, my staff will tell you this, and some of you heard me. I was, I was reading Acts, and it was like, young men will see vision, old men will dream dreams. And I was like, God, I've always read that and preached it. Young men will see visions, old men. But what does dreaming dreams mean? And last week, or two weeks ago, I was in the car with uh, some of our musicians, Dorian Skip and, and, uh, and uh, our, um, Devontae. And I never asked them this question. I said, hey guys, what's your dream? Tell me your dream. Not what your job is, what's your dream? And then I asked them another question, how can I help make that happen? Because I realized that when God transitions you from a young man to an old man, that your vision is now to dream somebody else's dream. And the Lord told me this. He said, Pastor, and I'm gonna speak this over you. If you would live an open-handed life, I'll keep your hands full. How many of you want that for your life? I want you to stand right now, wherever you are, and put your hands out. Father, I pray right now. God, you said in your word in Proverbs that the world of the generous gets bigger and bigger but the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. God, I pray, God, that as an intercessor, as an influencer, and as an investor, God, that I would invest in other people's breakthrough, other people's healing, other people's miracle, because this is a house of miracle. And Father, as I give, I pray that you keep, as I, as I live an open-handed life, I pray that you keep our hands full. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen.